It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Jason J. Lewis, the voice of Superman on Justice League Action. This is Mark Wayne, writer of Superman Birthright, and you're listening to The All Things Kryptonian podcast, including Superman and Supergirl. We discuss games, movies, cartoons, TV shows, and comics. Find us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's Superman. That's right. So after having our discussion about Bob Holiday and David Wilson, I guess I just got thinking there's no better time than now to just go ahead and tackle this epic, for, forgotten epic, I guess you could say. That is, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's Superman, the Broadway musical. I think it's funny it's taken this long to do, just because if anyone who knows my wife, knows my wife is an amazing singer. She has done musical theater. Um, She was in school for musical theater. Her sister's in musical theater. Her mom did musical theater, if you see a pattern here. And by golly, I bet my children will be in musical theater. And that's all good. And I said that before. Is I actually have done some plays and directed some plays as well. And actually wanted to do this at one point locally. But it just didn't work out. And that's what happens. So. That's a, that's a history, right? Now, the only two versions I've been able to view is the David Wilson film. It's on YouTube. I posted a link. And the version by a small theater group. The script was very difficult <clears throat> to get a hold of. And it's it's not easy. I am no way a music aficionado. I like musicals, but I find this interesting because... I like, and I, I joke with my wife, like, I like movie version of musicals because they cut out a lot of songs. <laughs> we recently saw my sister-in-law directed Shrek, the musical. And after, I had never seen it, and then after watching her... And after seeing it, I studied, like, there were songs that were cut out. And that is, I have seen a couple of Broadway productions, the best being uh, the one that I, I judged with my wife right after we were married was like the marriage of our two tastes was we saw American Idiot, and I've been a lifelong Green Day fan. And so, you know, it's it's interesting stories that you like. And I, I don't mind musicals, but like I say, I like a little bit when it doesn't seem like they sing every moment of everything, and I know I get harassed a lot for that because like, that's a musical. Yeah. I mean, my favorite musical is Seven Brides for Seven Brothers. It's a very unique musical. There's no giant chorus singing. There's like one scene of large chorus dancing. But that's enough of musicals. <laughs> but my history. So I really feel, as much as I've talked about before, that Superboy is the forgotten Superman like show, legacy, whatever you want to call it. I really feel like it's a bird, it's a plane of Superman. It's like the black sheep that no one wants to talk about. Because there is no recorded version of like the stage musical that's easily to get a hold of. What people know of is the 1975 ABC television special with David Wilson. And that's not what everyone wants to talk about. You know, a few years later, of course, we got the Superman the movie which helped kind of, I think, people forget about the TV special. But at the same time, it is important that we remember that existed. It's kind of like the way we people talk about Batman and Robin. We're far enough removed from it that we can look back and through the lens and see what it was and what we've gotten since. So I feel like we're going to take this journey together. And if you are curious, you can check out the, the music. I have the soundtrack. And... It's 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 a trip. <laughs> it's it's neat, and I kind of wish, in a way, that it would be revived and 
you know, the way that we've gotten a lot of these recent. Let's see, they did Grease, Rocky Horror. What was the other one they did, like on TV, where they started doing these specials? Was it Footloose? No, I don't remember. Grease is like the musical everybody knows. Everybody's like Grease. So let's take a journey of what we can and discover what exactly this is. All right. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's a Superman. Now, first of all, that title, great title. Uh, words I never thought I'd actually say in real life, meaning seriously. But going for nature walks with the kids on the mountains, I'd be like, look up in the sky. i am like, it's a bird. And they'd look, and then, of course, one of the kids would be like, it's a plane. And then Sailor would be like, it's Superman. It's just hilarious that we actually would do it. It's a 1966 musical composed by Charles Strauss with lyrics by Lee Adams. And a book by David Newman and Robert Benton it is based on the course of the character of Superman created by Jerry Siegel and Joe Shuster, published by DC Comics. Think about at this time, Shuster and Siegel were alive to see this come to life. While the show's original Broadway run was well-received, it did not catch on with audiences, closing after three and a half months and costing an unprecedented $600,000. The show at the time was Broadway's biggest flop. The show earned its production's cost, thus qualifying it as a commercial hit at least. And what's interesting is later when the TV special was made, it was made with the idea that maybe we could recoup some of the money that was lost. The plot revolves around Superman's efforts to defeat Dr. Abner Sedgwick, a 10-time Nobel Prize losing scientist who seeks to avenge the scientific world's dismissal of his brilliance by attempting to destroy the world's symbol of good. Additionally, Superman comes into a romantic conflict with Max McCannon, a columnist for the Daily Planet newspaper who resents Lois Lane's attraction to Superman and later teams up with Sedgwick to destroy Superman. See, right there, it'll tell you that it's a little bit different. Um, it is important to try to think about comics. Now, we've talked about this a lot when we look at these adaptions of live action, is where is the character in the comics at the time? It's been great that our friend Brian has been reading DC Comics chronologically. So when we go back and we jump around and we do these shows or movies or whatever, he can kind of, he jumps in like, well, at the comics at this time, Superman was like this, and... It sparked a big debate when we talked about Superman the movie, exactly where Superman was in the comics and how Superman the movie created its own style for Clark and Cal and Superman himself and how that later filtered into the comics. So that's always an interesting plug to keep in mind when you're like, oh, that's not Superman. Just like we discussed about George Reeves being an amazing Superman, but he's a golden age Superman. He is. And when you go back and you read Action Comics 1 and those early stories, you'll look at it and say, wow, that's George. But we continue. The song You've Got Possibilities is generally considered the show's most memorable tune and is the only one to be often performed outside the show. It was recorded in 1966 by Peggy Lee on the album Big Spender and Matt Morano on the album Here's to My Lady and has been performed and recorded by many other singers. It was also featured in a 2005 com- TV commercial for Pillsbury. Mm-hmm. It's Grand Biscuits. The final part of the overture that featured the title song from the original cast album was used as the opening and closing theme for all the newscasts on WTOP TV Channel 9, now WUSA TV in Washington, D.C. from 1970 until 1982, along with full of handful other stations, most prominently New York, City. That's interesting, right? When you consider that this thing is trying to be forgotten. And I will be honest with you. I didn't know it existed until I watched in 2006 when I watched the special uh, documentary on Superman that came out alongside the release, you know, of Superman Returns. That was a great time to be a Superman fan as far as media because it seemed like in 06 when Superman Returns was coming out they released a lot of things you know finally you could find 
TV series and on DVD and car, everything. I mean, one of the best memories I had of the time was just getting off work late and stopping at a Walmart and seeing that they had this little kiosk, not kiosk, but like display in the middle full of Superman t-shirts and it had toys and it had the Lois and Clark, Superboy, The Adventures of Superman, all the old Chris films on DVD, the Justice League, the Superman the Animated Series, all of that stuff was right there. And I was like, yes, I'm buying this up because for the longest time I couldn't find them on DVD. It was before everyone could just jump on Amazon because, you know, all that was becoming new to me and to everybody. So it was very, very interesting. Now, continuing on. Uh, the music, like I said, it's it's not horrible. Um, it's very of the time. And the recording that I have, I do not think um, it cons- was the original cast. I'm going to pull it up now because I haven't thought about it in a while. But maybe it is the original cast. But anyways, now the production... Like I stated, it was started in 1966 in Broadway. 75 TV special. Uh, 2007 had a Los Angeles concert. 2010 was in Dallas. 2013 was in New York City on course. 2014 was in London. 2015 was the West End. And 2016 was Germany. The musical opened on Broadway at the Alvin Theater on March 29, 1966, directed by Harold Prince, with choreography by Ernest Flatt. It starred Bob Holliday as Clark Kent in Superman. Patricia Menard as Lois Lane, Jack Cassidy as Max McKinnon, Linda Levine as Sydney. The production received generally positive reviews, but it failed to catch on with theater going public and closed on July 17, 1966, after 129 performances. The musical received three Tony Awards. It did receive three Tony Awards, which is very interesting when you consider that most people consider it a flop and horrible. <clears throat> Let's see, it received Best Actor in a musical for Cassidy, Best Featured Actor in a musical for O'Sullivan playing the main villain, and Best Featured Actress, Menard. One of the songs from the score, You've Got Possibilities, had some success outside the show. According to composer Charles Strauss, the official title of the show included question marks. It's a bird, it's a plane, it's Superman. The program for the show does not include all these. Two productions were staged the next year, both the St. Louis Municipal Opera and the Kansas City Starlight Theater in 66. They restaged the show, and Bob Holliday played Superman in both productions. Each was an open-air venue requiring the use of large cranes to facilitate Superman's flight. Other cast members in these two productions were Karen Morrow as Sidney and Charles Nelson Riley as Dr. Sedgwick. Which Charles Nelson Riley is funny because the only version of Charles Nelson Riley that I know of is from Saturday Night Live, played by Alec Baldwin. The show was produced by, at the Godspeed Opera House, East Hadman in Connecticut, from June through July 3rd, 92, with Gary Jackson as Superman and Jamie Ross, Vin Cox, and Gabriel Bear. On March, on May, jeez, I can't talk, 14th, 2007, the reprise. Marvelous Musical Monday program in Los Angeles presented a concert version of the musical, which featured Cheyenne Jackson as Superman, Jean Louis Kelly as Lois Lane, or Jean Louis Kelly. I love my French. What can I say? Richard Kind as Dr. Sedgwick, Patrick Cassidy in his father's old role of Max McKinnon, and the composer Charles Strauss in a special appearance as Perry White. From June 15th to 17th, 2007, the music was presented in concert in New York Theater. Bob Holiday, the original Superman on Broadway, attended the June 16th matinee. From June 18th to July 25th, 2010, the Dallas Theater Center presented a revised version of It's a Bird, starring Matt Cavanaugh and the dual role of Clark Kent and Superman. The show's primary love or focus was the love triangle between Clark Kent and Lois Lane. A stage concert took place in New York. 
in the Encore Center in 2013. In September of 2016, there was a first production in the German language on stage. Still photos from the original Broadway production can be seen in the documentary Look Up in the Sky and the Amazing Story of Superman, as well as footage from the TV version. Book author Robert Benton and David Newman went on to co-author the screenplay for the 1978 film Superman, which that in itself, if you look at the credits, (laughs) uh, it's, it's, it's crazy because I'm not going to diverge too far, but looking at the credits to Superman, the movie, you will see that you have the Mario Puzo as the first writer. And then you have Robert Benton, David Newman. And then I'm looking at the poster right now. Leslie Newman, Robert Benton, David Newman. And then you have who officially fixed the script but was not able to be marked as a writer was Tom Mankiewicz. So it's crazy how the synergisticness of Superman pulls things together. And that's the history of the stage musical. And I think it's interesting, first of all, just because it's so small and limited that we don't always know. Like, you know, we don't know that it exists in a lot of ways because it's not talked about. Now, breaking down the musical numbers in Act 1, we have the overture. We have the song Doing Good by Superman. We Need Him, which is Lois, Max, and Superman. It's Superman, Lois. We Don't Matter at All, Jim and Lois. Revenge by Dr. Sedgwick. The Woman for the Man, Max and Lois. You've Got Possibilities, Sydney. What I've Always Wanted, Lois. Everything's Easy When You Know How, The Flying Lines. Revenge, reprised by Dr. Sedgwick. It's Super Nice, The Company. Act 2. So Long, Big Guy by Max. The Strongest Man in the World, Superman. Ooh, Do You who do you Love You, Sydney. You've Got What I Need, Dr. Sedgwick. It's Superman, reprised by Superman, Lois, Sydney, Max, The Flying, Lings, Jim, and Company. I'm Not Finished Yet, Lois. Pow, Bam, Zoink, Superman, The Flying, Lings. Of course, the finale. The whole entire company. Interesting, right? You're now thinking, hmm, maybe we should check this out. And I'll probably be having some of these songs on my head for the rest of the day, thanks to the listening. And it's funny because I wish we could get a really good version of this as a special or something. I feel like theater is kind of coming back. And with the streaming services today, I know everyone first says, oh, throw it on HBO Max or whatever. And I mean, yeah, I mean, that's kind of where... DC's putting all their stuff and everything. But I just feel like this gave you something neat and different. Um, for, not only for the character, but just period. I mean, especially when you have quality. I mean, <laughs> I, I chuckle right now because I think, you know, someone who is a huge Superman fan who has the skills. Um, one, Grant Gustin, who's currently the Flash. But two, which is ironic, Darren Chris. Darren Chris, having been technically the music meister in the musical episode of the flash and Supergirl crossover, but also voice of Superman for the new continuity that's being built with Superman man of tomorrow. He has the skills and I could see him actually portraying Superman. And it would be interesting to, in, in an age where we have glee or had, should I say glee? And then we have musical episodes of our shows. I mean, we had, In the past, Buffy, we had Psych. You know, recently we had Supergirl and the Flash crossover and do a musical episode. And it's one of those things that people, you know, do and inspire. And I think Legends just recently did something. So to think that it's not out of the possibility to do a full-on high production of a Superman musical with quality talent when you have the talent in your inner circle is not hard to say. Now that's my setup for when we now talk about the TV special that most famously gets known for this because it's something that's visual. There was, you know, television at the time it was recorded, it was aired 
and people could find versions of it. And like I said, there's a version on YouTube. I posted the link, and I'll reshare the link. But it's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. It was made into a TV special, which first aired during a late-night time slot on February 21st, 1975. Filmed on video over the course of three days, the show was significantly shortened. See, right there, back to what I said originally about when you have video recordings or whatever of productions, it's always shorter for the the film or video than what the actual Broadway production is. The script significantly changed. There's another thing to catch you. You're changing things. And the ethnicity of a troop of evildoers was changed from Chinese acrobats to mafia-style gangsters. That's cool. The mafia is always fun. Gangsters. The musical numbers, doing good, it's super nice, so long, big guy, and we don't matter at all. We're all dropped from this production, while the sound of the remaining musical numbers was updated to a more contemporary 70s sensibility. There you go again, and I'm going to pause there. Musicals, I think, it's weird, okay? And I say that because... You know, recently we've had Hamilton, and Janine and I recently watched The Heights and on HBO Max, or In The Heights, I'm sorry. And they're more what you can call contemporary-style musicals, where it includes rap and hip-hop-style themes, which I think are great for now, but will they carry in time? I don't know. I don't have the answers to that. I don't. And I'm not saying they won't. I'm just saying it's interesting because... Some of the Andrew Lloyd Webber things, which are like the biggest things ever. I go back now and like when we watch The Phantom of the Opera, you definitely hear that 80s vibe in the music and that synthesizer. And it can be considered cheesy by some people. Um, In the film version, I think they retweaked it a little, reorchestrated it. It's been so long since I've listened to Side by Side to compare but think about that, like like Cats, Andrew Lloyd Webber, and that film that came out and bombed. <laughs> but will those sensibilities of current timing carry on and become timeless? Think about, like, okay, Grease. That's an interesting one. Grease was set in the 50s, but yet all the musical stylings of it was the 70s. Like, Grease is the word. Um, great classic musicals that I love, that I think everybody really loves i mean disney's always kind of kept the musical vibe alive but thinking of like singing in the rain or like i said earlier seven brides for seven brothers there's a different sensibility to the style of music as well as the great and powerful and wonderful white christmas just something to think about you know because at the time i'm a cool like disco superman but then like now it's like disco superman hmm but in addition to these, a new musical number was made for the TV special, It's a Great Country. The show was broadcast on ABC Network under the wide world of entertainment late night umbrella title to poor critical response. It starred David Wilson as Superman Clark Kent, Leslie Ann Warren as Lois Lane, Loretta Swit as Sydney, David Wayne as Dr. Abner Sedgwick, Alan Luden as Perry White, Kenneth Mars as Max McKinnon, Gary O. Owens as the old-time radio-style voiceover narrator. Viewers of this remake felt that the TV production lacked the energy of the original Broadway show. Could you imagine going back in time and being a part and seeing the original Bob Holiday production? It would be pretty amazing. Now let's look at some things. The show was based, of course, on a failed Broadway musical, the same name which attempted... uh, to recoup the money, like I was stating. And it aired 11.30 p.m. and it was never rerun. That's just dumping it. That means that when they were done, they knew this is crap. <laughs> because with Superman, you would think they'd prime time at 8 o'clock. Let's get ratings. Interesting enough, George Chandler, who plays Jonathan Kent, appears several times on the 1950s series, The Adventures of Superman. Usually... As a shady character. Leslie Ann Warren would later audition for the role of Lois Lane in Superman 1978, but of course lost to Margot Kidder. The original Broadway production goes on to live in our minds as infamous and something that we never, never will be able to just comprehend. 
In the thing, Superman meets two young students named Jerry and Joe who idolize him. Joe is an artist who wants to draw pictures of Superman, and Jerry's a writer who wants to write stories about Superman. Joe, Schuster, and Jerry Siegel, of course, were the creators of Superman. It's kind of meta, very interesting. Also makes me think back to the discussion we had at All-Star Superman about the part where the world that Superman creates, you have people creating Superman in comics. During a scene where the mob discusses putting a hit out on someone who's giving crime a very bad name, one of the cronies suggests Marlon Brando, who would go on to play jor in Superman 78 three years later. It's a bird, it's a plane, it's Superman, I feel. It's one of those things that we could talk about forever because it's still kind of wrapped in a mystery. What happened? Where did it go wrong? Could it have been better? Um... You know, do we want to dissect it and break down? But I think it's important to know that it exists. We were able to look at it and see that, wow, there is this piece of Superman history that we're not all in touch with, that we don't know about. It exists. It's out there. It's hard to watch. But... The version I found of the theater company doing it, I think, is the most fun. It's a full production. It's the only thing I could find that's full on YouTube. Maybe someone else out there can find some things. I don't know. All I know is it is one of the few things of Superman that is still a mystery. And maybe one day we'll get something really great out of it. Maybe. It would be cool to have something to sing along with more Superman. So, until next time, good listeners, remember. Look out in the sky! If you want to help out this show and any other show on Southgate Media Group, and you really don't have the extra money to do so, check this out. Go to southgatemediagroup.com. At the top, there's a link to Amazon. Click that, log into your Amazon, shop and buy like normal, and part of the money that you spend comes back to us to help us with our podcasts. The Krypton Report is part of the Southgate Media Group network of podcasts. If you have an interest, check out Southgate Media Group to see if your podcast is there. I bet it is. At the Southgate Media Group website, you can sign up for our newsletter. You'll get info on all the shows, and you can find what you want. You'll also find links to our sponsors where you can get great products and support the podcast. Also, our book, Pod Life, Podcasting Stories. It's a great book. Check it out. It's nice to hear where people come from and why they do what they do. And remember...